Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in Jesus' name. We give honor unto God Almighty as a work of your altar in this image, Christ, and to let you to our Wednesday Bible study in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will truly be glorified be celebrated this time of day in Jesus' name. I give honor to our Father, who art in heaven, for his truly name. Amazing, I give honor to our Lord Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit, who truly rests and rules in the Bible within every one of us. Name. It's by the grace of God we all life here today, and then he keeps us well in all seasons of all of our life in Jesus' name. I give honor also to our apostle, our spiritual father, who's also training us even to become sons and daughters of God. And in the best way, he's led by the Spirit of God. So we truly honor him and his precious wife, Lady J. Hamilton, in the name of Jesus Christ. We truly bless him. Hallelujah. The family of faith, may we give honor to thy elders and all the ministers, and all your leaders and sons and daughters, kings and queens of the kingdom of God. I celebrate you all truly from my left to your right, and all those who are also I will be seated in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So today's title is Halloween, a day of recruitment. Hallelujah. If you have a note, you can write the title is Halloween. You can put a colon and a day of recruitment. Once again, Halloween, a day of recruitment. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are together so forth the title. In Jesus' name, Halloween, a day of recruitment. In Jesus' name. So we're going to start off with just a little history of Halloween. But we're going to also start off in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. So we know that a little history about Halloween is that Halloween means evening before All Hallows Day, meaning All Hallows Day means All Saints Day. So it is the evening before that specific day. All Saints Day is particularly on November 1st, but Halloween is All Saints, All Saints Day Eve, you would say. So it's All Hallows Eve. So it's like the Eve of the like hour of Christmas Eve. That is the Eve of All Saints Day, which is also originally November 1st, but it was actually changed. It was actually changed. It was actually later on in the, in the spring season, but it was changed until this season, in the fall season. And it was placed there on October 31st. So therefore, that's just a little background knowledge. So it's also, it's an Asian Harvest Festival. Halloween is also an Asian Harvest Festival. But believe it or not, Halloween is also a season. Halloween marks also is the beginning of the, you would say the winter season. And you like to say in the beginning, it marks the winter season. So Halloween doesn't just end on November, on October 31st. Halloween, as that season of Halloween, it continues also throughout the winter season. So until the end of the season, we're still under the season of Halloween, where it begins the long night and also the winter cold night. And this time also of Halloween, the best belief is actually where witches are most active. During this season, the also one reason why the seasons are prolonged, the way the night is prolonged, is so the men can sleep early. So they can have more time to sleep, but less time to labor in the spirit. Because while men sleep, what did the enemy do? He began to soul. So even so, that means also while we sleep in the night, but as the night begin to become longer, the season become longer, we also feel like, you know, because it gets dark early, let me go to sleep early. Not knowing that the hour, that the extra hour we have to sleep should be an extra hour of really pressing in the, in, in the place of prayer. Pressing in the reading of your word, pressing in the place of fasting. But we have been downplayed, we have been dumped, really, to be honest, but because now it gets early, night early, let me sleep a little longer. Not knowing that there's also witches that come together to increase the covenants. Where even sages, even necromancers, even warlocks are coming to strengthen their rank. Because it's a time where, it's a time of festivities and a time of celebration. But Halloween also marks, Halloween to the witches is their new year. This is the time of their new year. I know everybody, Chinese New Year, there's also Chinese New Year and it's a different time than the normal New Year. But for witches, their new year starts on Halloween. For sages, necromancers, warlocks, their season of new year is Halloween time. So with that being said also, it's a day of recruitment. You may not feel like you, you, you may not feel like all oh, day you gotta participate in Halloween, but also participate in the things of God during this season. 
It's not a time for the church to go silent or for the church to go sleep. It's not a time for us to go, for us to really not be able to mind the oh, it's all really, I don't partake in it, but okay then, what, but the things you should do partake in, which is the things that God can take to partake in it even deeper in this season. Because best believe also, is also a season of sacrifice. It's a time where also, both kingdoms are as a sacrifice. One is sacrificing for greed, but we give ourselves as a living sacrifice onto Yeshua. That's the difference. Amen. We give ourselves for the work for the for the glory of God, so the Father can continue to find expression upon the face of the earth. That even though people are being recruited, the question is also: Is our believers also not being recruited? Amen. Who are you recruiting? Who are you taking away from the kingdom of darkness to bring them into light? Amen. Who are you revealing light unto? Because you know, as the pastor said, that even though it may be light outside, it's really dark. We are in perilous times also. We know the season is already dark. But how many of us is really allowing the light of God within to really shine? Because if we know that it's really dark, what are we doing about it? It's, not, it's more so having the, the knowledge of what Halloween is, but what is what are you going to do about the knowledge? You can see and receive all you want to receive, or this is Halloween, and this will everything take place, but also what are you going to do about that knowledge? It's one thing to be filled with that knowledge, but guess you can be a Pharisee with this knowledge and never apply it to your life. Absolutely. But it's not for us to become a Pharisee with this knowledge. It's for us to apply it and live it out. If I know that this time, that, that it was believed by the Jews, that in this time of Halloween, in this specific time, the spirit realm is the most thinnest, many where spirits work, where evil spirits from the other realms are able to come into this realm and be able to mingle with men, mingle with sons and daughters. Because why? They're looking for a vessel. The thing about the spirit is that it's a legalistic realm. It's bounded by laws. Spirit, even this earth is bounded by laws. Spirits cannot happen here without a host. They need a body, a vessel to happen with, to, to be they need pretty much a habitation place because they need to find expression of the anything. Spirits, they carry the anything with them. They carry everything, they, the agenda, the will, they carry with them. Even angels carry the anything. That's why you're able to see the glory is outward because that's the anything that they carry. But us, our glory is hidden within us because the glory within us is Christ himself. Treasure within earth and vessel. So in this time of Halloween, as many spirits is thin, the spirit is thin, where many spirits are also entering into this realm. Yeah. But they're entering with an agenda. They're entering to recruit also. Because spirits, principalities, their job is to recruit. Powers, their job is also to carry out what that which principalities give unto them. Spiritual weakness are those that apply the law. They inflict men with what that which they receive from the principalities. So principalities are those that come to recruit for apostles. They come to recruit for those who have the gift of, prof of, of a prophet. Those who carry the office of an evangelist. They come to recruit this special, those who are the fight for ministry. Those who have the special grace, special calling. These who principalities come to recruit. So they can turn them into witches. Witches are actually prophets, but they become corrupted. They become perverted. That's why, that's why, that's why even shoot theories, they still operate the gift that God gave unto them, but just that it's prevented. Amen. It's just that it's also, it has been compromised. They allow it to be compromised for the sake of power, for the sake of knowledge, for the sake of popularity, for the sake of being known. So therefore, don't do, so therefore, do not just look down on the witch, or just on, um, because they too still have the apostolic also upon their life, because some of the witches are actually apostles. Some of them are pastors. Some of them are teachers. Because principalities got to them. And they was willing to give themselves unto the principalities for the sake of power. For the sake of fulfilling their own desires. So therefore in this season of Halloween, which is the eve of All Saints Day, it's time for us to really labor and be mindful. It's not for the church to go to sleep. It's not for the church to partake in church activities as in, because it's Halloween, we're celebrating, let's come together and let's pray dress up costumes where one can be like dressed up like Moses or dress up, dress up like Elijah. But guess what? You still partake in Halloween because you're dressing up. You can be like, oh, it's holy. It's a holy game where you still dressed up. But guess what? Even costumes is still part of Halloween. You, there's people even dressing up as Moses even though they go trick-or-treating. But
but guess what? You can come at a church say, we not gonna do it, we're gonna do mix with chair, but with Kali music, guess what? You still partake in Halloween. You still partake in the things that they sure say is the abomination. You still partake in these things that you sure say, do not partake in. You can be like, no, we're gonna come together at a church, even though it's a church setting, and yes, it's the house of God, you're inviting what the world is doing inside the house of God. So that's an abomination to you, sure. That's, that, that's the thing about the church is that whatever we learn, whenever what's in the world, we take to one and it within the church and make it and make it legal for us to do, make it legal for everybody to do. But guess so it's still something took from the world. And we think we, we want to present to God so God can sanctify it, but it's still of the world. I can present something of the world. It's like saying I'm gonna present lust to God so that God can sanctify and something that is good. I present to God masturbation so he can present, so he can sanctify it as something that's good so we can continue in it. But that's not, that's what we really doing though. That's what we really, we'll be taking all these things that God called an abomination, we make it a reality. Rather than, rather than exposing it, we partake in it. So the thing about Halloween is that, Halloween is that just on the 31st of October, is a season, a season of darkness, season of torment, a season of recruit, a season where the enemy is hunting because he's crawling around like a roaring lion. That, this dimension, the enemy doesn't stop. And this season, he's hunting even more so because he knows that it's easy access for him to get anybody he wants. And during this season, the reason why many children go missing in this time is because the children are the ones that are actually targeting. The children are the most targeted in this season, in this time. Why do, why do you think the Bible says, train up a child the way you grow up? Proverbs 22 verse 6. Why do you think the witches want to recruit those who are young? Why do you think they start at a young age? Why do you think that once a baby is born, a witch can intermarry with them and put them in a covenant? But they don't know because they don't got the knowledge of it. Why do you think that witches are recruiting at a young age? Because they know that a baby, whatever they believe, is hard to break it from them. If they hold on to something, they can hold on for good. Until they turn again. So if the day of recruitment, because why? They're teaching those, they're teaching a child in the way that they think, they think that they should grow up with recruiting them. So why do you think that it's a tax of, of abortion even? A tax even on young children? A tax on teenagers? Why you think that? Why you think that it's always, once, once you become of age, you begin to be like, I don't want to partake in this. I'm too old for Halloween. What do you think about the children? When, whenever you put the mindset, I'm too old for Halloween, that means you're no longer a potential target because why they go off the one who is younger than Because why it's going to take them a longer time to get to the point, I'm too big for Halloween. Some people took them 15 years to say I'm too big, but that's 15 years you was trained up in the ways of Halloween. And that's a cycle that's going to be hard to break. Because the things you entertain in that season for those 15 years, best believe it's still within you because you can pass it on to your children. So let us read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Hallelujah. Can I get sister, uh, whoever is there, can I see y'all going down. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Hallelujah. All saints day. Is November 1st, but for the Hispanic culture, it's actually called Dias de los Muertos, the day of the day. It starts from November 1st, Friday evening, and on to Saturday evening, I believe, on November 2nd. Dia de los Muertos, day of the day. But all of this into wine with Halloween. And it's still a day of recruitment. But for the Celtic, for those who are those who are guilty, those matter of fact, for the Romans, for the Romans, October thirty first day of Halloween is a feast. It's, it's called the feast of Pomona. Pomona was a goddess, was a goddess whom she was the goddess in the Roman in the Roman uh, culture, where she was the one that kept the fruits and the harvest for the entire season. So therefore, when this time of season came for the Romans, they was able they they got apples. They got fruits and they was able to give it unto and unto this goddess called Pomona as a sacrifice to say thank you. So it's an offering of thanksgiving. The thing about it is Pomona, her signature fruit is an apple. And this is where 
bobbing for apple originally from. So every time you bow for apples, you partake in it, you're giving reverence and then it's given unto this goddess called Pomona. Every time you partake in bobbing for apples. Now for those who are Irish, Irish, it was a Celtic festival, a Celtic celebration for the new year, which is called sowing. This for the Celtic is called sowing. S-A-M-H-A-I-N, sowing. This is what it was for them. And this began 1900 years ago. Halloween, you know how the scriptures talks about the Pharisees, how they really dressed, you know, really, that they dressed nice, but inside with the full of 10 men boats. Halloween is a whitewashed holiday, it's whitewashed. Because yes, outwardly, it looks harmless. Yes, we partake in it because why? The enemy presented as something that's harmless, but inwardly, it's full of 10 men boats. Inwardly, we know that it's really dark, it's wicked. We know that Halloween is really ungodly. So he's presented to us as something that is righteous. Because the enemy can step, he stepped, he made it seem so harmless to a point that he made it seem as if it's righteous for everybody to partake in. But it's like a whitewashed tomb. Where inside of the tomb, it's pretty on the outside. But inside you partake in it, it's full of them and both wickedness. So can we read the scriptures in the internet if you there? Six verse 14. Verse 14, yes, man. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 this is NLT and it reads don't team up with those who are unbelievers how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness how can light live with darkness hallelujah so one reason why I even use the scripture is because whenever Halloween is going on Halloween is going on in the northern part of Ireland when it's going on in Ireland, even northern France, it was going on, it was so big that whenever the believers, you know, people pretty much like, well, how do they call it, those who, who go around, missionaries. When Christian missionaries came to this place, these countries, they began to populate, populate it with Christianity. And the people began to conform to Christianity. And then the, and then this season of Halloween began to die out little by little. But the, the mistake that they made, that these believers made, is that they begin to make room for Halloween to continue. Yes, they begin to allow, they begin to allow the season when they begin to allow the people to be okay with worshiping pagan gods and also worshiping God at the same time. Yes, so therefore the people are slowly getting away from it. When they were, when they're no longer beginning to partake in the thing of darkness, but because they believe it, they allow it and say it's okay for you to partake in this also while also partaking the things of God. So therefore the believers, these missionaries, they put Christianity and paganism together. And that's what also when God said that if you're looking, I will speak to out my mouth. Yeah. So they may room for the enemy to really reign in this in this place. They may room for the enemy to reign in their religion. In that way they believe them. They may room also for they may room for people to become hypocrites, hypocrites and to live as hypocrites. They may even though there were believers who believed in God, they may room for people to stumble and to fall and to sin against God on purpose. Because they allow paganism to rule within the hearts of men. They allow paganism to enter with where, where Christianity was already ruling. So where God was ruling, they allowed the enemy to begin to show them on purpose. Because many times in our life, we can begin to allow the enemy to show in our life on purpose because we find ourselves out of order and out of out of alignment with God. Because they were so forget that I want God and also I want the things of the world. But you, if you're with God, you can have God and plus the things of the world. You cannot love God and memory at the same time. Because if you do, that means you're not really with God. And God will not consider you as his own soldier because if he used you, there's a great possibility when you curse God at any given moment and choose to bless the enemy. And then you'll flip from it. On a happy day, you bless God and you curse the enemy. So therefore, in this time, the believers who in this time, who came to explore, who came to express Christianity to these people, they allow paganism to continue. So what fellowship does light has with darkness? Yeah. What fellowship that that's good it has with evil? It has none. Because a well can only spring out there. Either, what's it called? Either sweet water or, it, or bitter water. It can have both. It's either fresh water or bitter water. Your faith cannot be into, it cannot into wine. You either fight for God or you're not. You either for God or you're not for God. Choose this day whom you will serve. So we knew at this appointed time, there are a lot of people to be, you know, to worship whatever God they want to worship. But God was never okay with it. 
So because they made room for it, it continued as a generational curse. It continued on because the things that we allowed to detect in our life, that we were called in sinful to break, if we make room for it, that means we make a room for the enemy to continue to sow. We tell the enemy, sow as long as you want. Tire in this place as long as you want because why you gave the enemy room. The things we call to break, we embrace it. The things we call to loosen, we shredding it. The chains we're supposed to break in people's life, we make room for them to say, no, it's okay for you to give in to this ungodliness as long as you still pray. Or as long as you go to church on time, continue in it, it's okay. As long as it's okay. As long as continue to fast, it's okay if it's continue in it. But the point of fast is denying yourself that you will not continue in the ungodly way. So we know now, rather than uprooting and tearing down, they begin to root. They begin to also plan. So these people, they really mess it up for those who are trying to escape this holiday. When now they begin to take these holidays and make it church holidays. Oh, it's holiday, it's Halloween, let's go to church so we can legalize it. Let's go to church so we can be able to praise to praise the enemy, but in the house of God. Where because the house of God, we can clothe ourselves with sheep's clothing, although we walk inside. So even with that being said, also they legalize the things of the enemy. The thing about the enemy is that he will search what if you give the enemy any legal divide, any legal area, he will take it. And he was so and so and so with no limitations. So in any time you touch any devices, best believe you have given the enemy legal rights in the area as long as you want him to. And don't think the enemy is going to sow just for now. He's going to sow considering the future as well. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 2. And at this time, the church also is supposed to really be holding adventures. In this time of Halloween, there are witches that station in every region that you live in. In every territory you live in, there's actually a covenant of witches that be stationed there by the enemy. There's also not only a covenant of witches, but a covenant of warlocks. There's a covenant of even sages and necromancy that being assigned to a territory that you live in. So that's why the and that's why the enemy also he also has an agenda within your territory. But if, if God's people, if God, who, those who are called with, they need to humble themselves and be able to even just offer a sacrifice of prayer unto God, then God will hear from heaven. He will forgive them and restore their land. Because you know the land is under bondage because there's also witches fighting against your prayers. Amen. There's witches also fighting against, fighting against the, the, the oil of God which you carry. Amen. There's witches also plotting against you in your own territory. You may not recognize which because they look just like you. Witches that dress just like you did. It's not, it's, not, it's not a cartoon where you see witches with all their pointy hair and black clothes. That's not how they dress. Witches just dress just like me and you. The way you're able to tell them is by the spirit of discernment. Without the spirit of God, it's going to be hard for you to tell upon a witch. It's going to be hard. It's going to be impossible. Because why? When they say hello to you, you won't even know it's a witch. Amen. When they say goodbye to you, even when they, even when they speak, you don't know what they speak inside. They call you over and eat. They say, but inside the hearts of the seven different combination. That's the thing about also. We need to jump because in the areas which you live in, Richard, which is also recognized that you are men and women of prayer. So guess what? In this time of recruitment, which is also recruiting to strengthen the ranks. They even going off of, they even going after those who are also who are also believers, especially believers. Because they want the, those who are Christians, those who are praising God, to be the first one to eat or to, to partake of this hunting. Because why if they if I can see, if only if I can get a believer to partake in it, so he can fall into my trap, into my snare, then that means I have gone, that means I've got beat. Then I can use it as an example, I can use it as an example to be able to portray this thing called Halloween. That because you touch it, the witches will begin to consider you as a potential full soldier for the covenant. I know that you already under spell. And this time of Halloween, witches are exercising their faith, not in God. The faith that they have within themselves, within the spirit that they that they are um, a puppet to, and within Satan. So you may just think that oh, let me just go to sleep at this time. No, you're wrong. Let me just stop praying at this time because at this time they also sow. They pay the price to sow from night to morning because why they put spells in the atmosphere. They're putting also the reason why most accidents happen, why so much traffic happen, is not because it's naturally happening. 
Because there's also spirits assigned to their place that cause those traffic to take place. There's also spirits that have been assigned in those reaches. But you and us, we really won't really know it. Because why? We've been dumped down in this area. But many of us, we know that witches are also real. But we tend to downplay them. Rather than going to war, we go to sleep. But when it comes to Christ, may shine is not a point. Because day is still here, but night will come and no man will leave. Sir. Hey. So Deuteronomy 12 and 2, can somebody read it? Anybody's there? Deuteronomy 12 and verse 2. Deuteronomy 12, verse 2, King James Version. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods, upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. All right, jump down to 29 to 32. Read all of it. Yes, sir. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so un unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination unto the Lord, which he hated, have they done unto their gods? For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Hallelujah. So God is also telling you that the way that they, the, the way that these people, who, the way that they serve their gods, do not come and serve God in the way that those people serve their gods. Do not come and worship God or raise an altar to God in the way that his people serve God. Whenever God was going to get into the promise that he told them that, make sure you get rid of everything that was in the land. Make sure you destroy every altar that's dead. Yeah. Make sure you get rid of everything that you see that was not mine, that's not over me. Anything that's not worthy is it to me, get rid of it. But the thing about it is, even though in the natural they got rid of it, they forgot to take care of the spirits that still reign in that place. Amen. They forgot to take care of the spirits that still had jurisdiction and right in that place. Even though they enter the promised land, they do something that they allow to remain there, which they allow themselves to be partakers of. That's why Israel began to serve to different gods. That's why Israel was only supposed to serve God, but little by little they got influenced by the nations around them. Who's influenced you to be able to partake in the things that are not of God? Have you, have you, have, the things that God told you to give up, have you got rid of it? What is it you still holding on to? What is it you still partake in that God said, leave it alone? What is it that what is it you still worshiping? Even though you still worshiping God, that God say, for, to, forsake this and follow me. Which what is it? Because we know that even in the midst of Halloween, there's even things that we're still allowing in our lives that God say, leave it alone, that we're still allowing to find expression into our life. We're still allowing anger to partake within us, even though God say, leave anger alone. Because you're supposed to take up my peace, because it peace surprise all understanding. Know that my peace surprise on this day, why not get it? So, God told as you enter the promised land, do not entertain the things which they left behind. Take down the altars because if not, those altars look pleasing to the eyes of men. The things which you love so much, even Isaac, look pleasing unto Abraham to a point that Abraham couldn't be willing enough for God. Abraham would have worshipped Isaac because he loved Isaac so much. But if not for the Lord who humbled Abraham, who broke him down. So he told him, I am a shooting in St. Great War. What must God break you down from to make you realize I'm the one you're supposed to serve? So when they entered the long God told him, get rid of everything. And don't worship it the way that they worship their gods. But some people in even the body of Christ, they should worship God the way that they, what they, the way they did when they was in the world. Let's go to Ephesians 5 and 11. Ephesians 5 and 11. For God's people perish because of lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. Oh, if you're there, Ephesians 5 and 11. Hallelujah. Oh, Ephesians 5 and 11 says, 
and we have a fellowship with the uh, unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. God, we are so rather exposing them. We're doing the opposite. We partake in this unfruitful work of darkness. We know that the Lord told us to forsake these things, but rather than forsaking them, we partake in them. We allow the enemy to find expression in areas where it shouldn't find expression. In this time of Halloween, they use bonfires as, as a, also as a service unto the deity that they were serving. But the bonfires was actually a metaphoric representation of an altar. Because a bonfire needs fire. And a bonfire, it wants a little fire, right? Yeah. So an altar does the same also. Because upon the altar, you need fire. Because we told the Bible, the Bible tells them, make sure to add wood on the altar so that the fire can to burn from night to morning. They were talking about the brazen altar. So with that being said, also the bonfire was a representation of an altar. And an altar, you need priesthood. Priesthood is what allows us to be able to tap into the presence of God, to experience the reality of God. And also priesthood allows God to find expression upon the face of earth because he's used you as a vessel. So the reason why the spirits were able to come in is because they found an altar Amen. through the bonfires. They found an altar to be able to show, to find expression of their gender upon the face of the earth, upon the people because they have an altar. What is your altar serving to? Who is your altar worshiping? What does your altar say about you and about the God you worship? Is your altar connecting heaven to earth to heaven? Or is it connecting earth to the to, to Hades? Who does your altar serve? Who does it? And who does your auto allow to find expression? Is it really God? If they replace God, there will be evidence of it. How is it together? Amen. So we know that altars, priesthood, allows any spirit to find legal rights upon the face of the earth to carry out the atmosphere. Now let's go to trick or treating. What do you know about trick or treating? Let me ask you. What do you know about trick or treating? Anybody? Let me pause your candy. So, uh, so what I like when I get with you, I think is one that I like is what sharing, that is one, sharing, two, giving, three, exchange of goodies and things like that, yeah. Amen. Anybody else? What comes to mind when you hear trick or treat? Trick or treating only happens towards the evening, so when dust begins to fall. Um, also, costumes are encouraged to be worn during trick or treating. Um, you also have to knock on the door or ring the doorbell of someone's house to speak the words trick or treat and receive something. Hallelujah, uh, well said. So, trick or treating in this season. It's actually a phrase, a code, a legal code you give to a spirit to enter within. When you say trick or treat, whatever they say, Slim of you, all this is actually not only is it a code, it's also a spell you cast. It's where you're allowing witches to find you as a potential free soldier, where you're allowing spirits to say, you really say, spirits that enter, here I am, I'm a willing vessel, use me. Here I am, choose me. Don't pass by me. Use me too. Find expression in me. The thing about it is we thought we, we've been dumbed down to not really know that it's a legal expression. You were saying because the spirits are entering, but they cannot stay without a vessel or host. So when you knock, it's like spiritually saying, I'm an open vessel. When you're saying, when they open the door, it's saying, I'm opening my door for you to come in. When you receive the tree, you see the spirit saying, Thank you. I find a dwelling place. When unclean spirit is cast out, where does it go? Yeah. Dry places. Yeah. What happens when it doesn't find it? Back to it one. comes back right. Does it come back the same? Seven, Seven. 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 more. So the many spirits that enter into the realm at that night, and they one of them find a vessel, you think they're going to come alone? Because every spirit is fighting and wrestling to find one vessel. Yep. I think there's one that's called Legion. If I find one, hey, I find one, let's come in. Yeah. The number don't stop. As many as can enter that vessel, you will give it access. You can't complain and say, why am I not dealing with this? Because when you say trick or treating, you gave that spirit access, enter me. Yeah. Dwell within me legally. Because he 
came from your verbal mouth. And you also came to agree with me, body, soul, and spirit. I to agree with that. Legal rights. So when that took place, when you were saying that, you know, it's, you know, like, ah, it's just Halloween, and yeah, man, we're getting candies. Trick or treat. You are either going to be deceived, and the midst of being deceived, I'm going to give you something you really want. So the enemy is recruiting when he says, if you bow down to me, I will give you all the riches of the world. Doesn't that sound familiar in Matthew chapter 4? Who did the enemy tempt with that same thing? If you bow down to me, I'll give you all of this. Wasn't that a treat? But what did Yeshua say? The Lord your God. He says, you worship only the Lord your God. So we're not supposed to receive a from the enemy because the reason why many give into it, even though they reject Yeshua, for the sake of power, for the sake of recognition, for the sake of being known, they even go to a point of sacrificing their own children and family to receive this power. That's why Joshua said, as for me and my household, yes, we we'll serve God. Amen. So the father who is the head had the right to even sacrifice his own children legally to any spirit he desire. Can they say no? Because he's the head of the household. Who can intervene? The wife. But is she praying? While the father goes out seeking power, what is the wife doing? If you marry a person who's unsaved, the wife who's faithful, who's saved, if she prays long enough, the one who's unsaved can be saved. Amen. So it matters. So when you say trick or treat, be careful. Because you're casting spells, though you're not a witch. You're casting things in the atmosphere, though you're not a witch or a warlock. You operate in the things that is dark, though you're a vessel of light. So I come and ask you again. What fellowship is light has with darkness? So why are we saying trick or treat? Why are we saying smell our feet? Why are we going around costumes? And now let's go to the costumes. And also trick or treat, I found out that is uh, is also called as it's also known as solic, where the children will go around with a soul cake, singing. And also praying for the dead family members. Offering prayers for the dead. Trick or treat, you're offering a prayer for the dead. Now you're operating as a what? Necromancer. Unknown. Let's talk about the costumes. Now let's go to a scripture, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14 through 15. This is for the costumes, and we're going to stop here for the costumes. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 to 15. Go ahead, Trey. <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 to 15. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to their works. So if the Bible reveals to us that then no wonder that even Satan himself can transform himself as an angel of light. And also he doesn't stop even his ministers, those who serve him. And he's not talking about just spirits, those who serve him meaning also people. Mm -hmm. They can appear as an angel of light, as a minister of righteousness. Where they will speak a good game to you, we will only recognize they're really after your soul. They're really after to sacrifice you, not even knowing. So the costumes, the reason why people would wear costumes in this time of Halloween is because they understand that in the spirit realm, when the spirits come, witches are also activated and so are warlocks and they're going around tormenting people. They're going around, you know how you know the Bible talks about uh, the promiscuous the promiscuous woman, how she looked outside our window looking for one that was simple. The witches also looking for those who are simple, who's unlearned in the things of the spirit, in the things of God. They're looking for those who are simple or naive, who are unlearned and untrained in the things of God, the things of prayer. Because they're looking for people to recruit, but they're looking for those who are unlearned. It's the reason why when Paul said, that if I leave, fishes move for what? They come. And they come quickly, not spare the flock. So therefore, in this time, the reason why they begin to recover is because there was part of the persecution and the oppression that the people was receiving from the spirits, those evil spirits, and also from the witches, and also from the sages and the necromancers. They got to a point that, no, if I look at them, then maybe they will surpass me and not even bother me. But not, not only did they know that, touching that costume, 
where you also give a legal right for that spirit which you want to look like to intervene within your soul, to live within you. That that custom gave them legal access onto your life. That if I was just wearing this, because they thought that, they thought that if I can put on a scary custom that I can look like them, so they may be like, okay, I'm blending in with them. So many they say I'm becoming a demon, so they will not recognize the item and really a person that's trying to flee from them. So they put a custom to dress as demons. So they become demons, not knowing that those demons, they're wiser than what you really think. They deceive you to put on costume so that they can continue to torment you so they can receive you. That when you touch this costume, they say thank you. That's all I was waiting for. Or they put a snare, a trap, just for you to be like, thank you. You did my job easy. So they kill two birds in one stone. So the costumes, it could be can put on costume of Moses. You still touch the day. They, they ain't scared the castle because it's Moses. Moses had his time. But you're not Moses. You can dress as Jesus Christ. They're going to be like, power Jesus with no power no. Who is this Jesus you're wearing? Beautiful. Who are you? You can even wear, you can even be, you can, no matter what, you can even wear as a costume as the enemy. That's even more for the enemy to come at you. So the castle are legal rights for people. You can even dress as a princess. All these Disney movies, they give you ideas of what to dress in this time of the year. Because why? Disney is also a part of it. The reason why they get them when they're young, show them all these movies throughout the year because when Halloween comes, there are many options to choose from. Various options. From animation to even adventures. That they are without limitation of what cause them to choose. So when they give in to it, they say, here I am. Thank you. So even the enemy can transform yourself into the angel of light. But we too, we put on a costume, we transform yourself from a son of righteousness to a partaker of the things of the enemy. Halloween, the celebration, the decorations, all that is satanic worship unto Satan. Because Satan wants worship and never change about it. He always wants worship. To this day, the thing about it is those people who Satan recruits the witches, at any given moment in time, he can kill them. He promises them power, but any time, he can kill them. The whole point is they come with me so we can go to hell together. I rule over you as your master. I give you what you want because I give you the world, knowing that the world will soon pass away and everything will end. That you too, you pass away with me. When I pass away, you come with me. We have no escape. That's why he recruits. The question is, who are you recruiting? Who are you recruiting for? Right. And while people are over here doing all these things, going, ah, I'm not doing Halloween, but I'm going to go to a Halloween party. I'm going to go to the club. The spirits even in the clubs also. Oh, I'm going to go and do everything else. I'm going to just be at home to turn up my life so people will not see that I don't partake in Halloween. You can do that. But if you're not doing a party, then you yourself make yourself a bastard. So in the midst of all this information you can receive, when this time comes, will you raise a cry? While witches also recruit you, will you raise a cry to heaven that your, your, how can I say this, your, your aroma of prayer, can it get large enough that wherever witches want to gather to have a meeting, they can't be in the circumference of it, that they have to relocate. That's why men must pray. That church should just entertain you. But we must pray because why lives and souls are being sacrificed while we're sleeping. People we got and trust unto are being sacrificed, we in bed snow. Rather than the raising that cry and holding night vigils. Ah, let me go to sleep. I'm too tired. I'll try again tomorrow. I'll try again next year. Not knowing that 10,000 souls already been sacrificed because you now watch and pray. But rather you fell into temptation. So we can't leave our post because it's a time of festivities. We can't leave our post because it's a time of people doing everything they want. The thing about it is that we're going to recruit for the, for the kingdom, of, the kingdom of light. This which you know about Halloween, tell them. That's what you're going to say this soul to. Yeah. Tell them. Though they don't believe you, at least their, their blood will be on your hand. Amen. So let's stand to our feet. Halloween, a day of recruiting. While the enemy looks for soldiers, who are you recruiting? And I must speak this as a revelation. 
Yeah, remember in Matthew chapter 4 when the enemy told Yeshua that turned his, turned his stones into bread? The reason why also I received that he, he required that is because Yeshua only builds what kind of stone? Try stones. And he's building up a spiritual house. So he only built with dry stones. So that means the people that every believer will follow Yeshua is a dry stone. If, the, if Yeshua would have turned the stones into bread, he would have allowed the enemy to have all of the body of Christ. Every dry stone, the enemy would have received it because he wanted an army. So he said, give me this army and you turn it into bread. So I can use it for my pleasure. And Yeshua said, nah. Man should not live a better long, so it defended me and you. To live by every way that comes out the mouth of God. So be encouraged. Yes, sir. It's a day of recruitment. It's a day of interview. He's interviewing. He's interviewing people. But will you two also interview? Will you two recruit? Let my light shine so bright before me. They may see what God is doing in me. But they may come and praise the Father. So, Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus. We give you glory and honor and praise, for God. May you be celebrated, Father, in this time and this day. Help us, Father, to give ourselves unto prayer, O God, in this season. Help us to be wise, O God Almighty. Help us to be wise, O God, serpent, in us, as doves, O God. Help us not to be partakers of the things that don't rather to expose them, O God. Help us to be able to pray, O God, even to give ourselves as a living sacrifice. Our bodies as a living sacrifice only. And they set them to God as a reason for other service. For our never not to go sleep in this time, O God. But rather help us to stand for that and raise an altar, O God. Raise a cry unto heaven, Father. And to be able to intercede, Father, for souls, O God. Even for ourselves and our families, O God. Help us not to be bystanders in this season, Father. Help us to let your light shine so bright within us, O God. That many men will see the light, O God. They will come and praise you, God. They will come and serve you, Father. For the users, O God. Help us to be willing vessels, O God. To be willing full soldiers, O God. The cross, O God. Help us not to partake in it, Father. But rather, for expose all that is dark, Father. All that is ungodly, Father. Help us not to entertain truth theories, O God. Mediums, O God. Help us not to entertain for even witches, O God. Witchcraft, O God. Help us to cast down even so God, spells, O God. Help us, O God, to be wise, O God. To pray and watch this week to avoid the temptation. Give me grace in your prayers, O to my life. Father, we bless you in honor. In Jesus' name, we pray, O God. May we reach and may we soon establish your grace. Amen. 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 Am